Hi, this is E.T., and this is Joseph Greenstein, also known as the Mighty Adam. Greenstein was born 1893, Solwaki, Poland. He died in New York City, 1977, of cancer. He was 84. Greenstein was occasionally featured during E.T.'s youth in weightlifting magazines of the day as an unlikely but gifted strongman. Unlikely because he stood only 5 feet 4 inches, that's about 1.6 meters, and he weighed only 140 pounds, about 63.5 kilos. Whereas strong men of the day, such as Paul Anderson, Doug Hepburn, Bill West, and others, often weighed two times or more Greenstein's weight. It's also unlikely considering that Greenstein was born prematurely at four pounds, about 1.8 kilos, and that he contracted tuberculosis at the age of 17. Greenstein, according to the doctors then, was not going to survive either. But he overcame those challenges by disciplined exercising and eating. Greenstein, for about a year and a half, traveled with the Isakoff Brothers Circus in Eastern Europe, where he was tutored by and apprenticed to strongman champion Volanko. Volanko put Greenstein on a diet of whole grains, beans, fruits, some kosher meats, and he showed him strength secrets, including lifting weights, the weights were sand-filled buckets, and more importantly, proper deep breathing, and coordinated mind, body, and spirit. Polanco put it this way, Yosela, or Joseph, before you begin a task, you must first succeed up here, pointing to his head, mind and spirit, then action. Later, Joseph came to the USA settling in Galveston, Texas, where he worked as a dock worker, oil field worker, and he wrestled as Kid Greenstein. He spent a few months in Japan, where he studied jiu-jitsu and modified his diet, eating more fruit, coarse rice, uh, raw eggs, and soy sauce. Then back to Texas, where he wrestled the lightweight champion of the world, George Bothner, that match took place almost three hours, and it ended up in a draw. He was also befriended by Jack Johnson, soon to be heavyweight champion. But in 1914, Greenstein was shot by a neighbor interested in Joe's wife. I forgot to tell you that Greenstein married a woman named Leah prior to leaving Poland. The bullet hit Greenstein right between the eyes. Now, the gun was 30 feet away, about 9.1 meters, and it was a 38 caliber pistol, and it had profound effects. Greenstein put it this way to his wife. I was on the ground. I knew I was shot. A burning pain between my eyes. And then somehow I wasn't myself, but something much more. And I knew in that instant that I would not die. I couldn't. Not even a bullet between the eyes could kill me. It has all been for a reason, Leah. Everything. Volanko. The bullet. Everything. All for a purpose. Greenstein pursued not just the running, the weight training, and deep breathing, but new studies in psychology, anatomy, and mesmerism, or hypnotism, in order to make the mind and body triumph over matter. He put it this way, I will bend the spike now. My mind will command my body. The spike will give way. About this time, having always been influenced by the Nazarite Samson, Greenstein allowed his hair to grow. And he began demonstrating stunts, which, in 1927, he introduced to New York audiences during a vaudeville act 
at the Mount Morris Theater. He billed himself as the Mighty Adam. His feats of strength included twisting metal bars, biting coins in half, chomping nails in two, and biting into chains. He could change a tire with his bare hands. He could break chains with his chest. He drove 20 penny nails through thick boards. More impressively, he could scroll steel rods into various shapes. And he could pull multiple cars with his hair. He'd already demonstrated this power a year earlier at an airport by holding a monoplane in place. Later on in 1928, he held back a nine-cylinder airplane running at 1,600 RPM, and the force nearly caused permanent facial damage. Greenstein lectured, whenever possible, on the virtues of health, exercise, and the power of the mind. He introduced to people the Samson Nazarite diet of cereal, beans, fruit, eggs, some clean meat. He advocated avoiding sugar whenever possible and never overeating. In fact, he said people should fast one or two days per week. Today, as many of you know, that is a so-called new fad. During one lecture, as Six disorderly men disrupted another speaker's talk. Greenstein walked into the audience, confronted all six. They put up a fuss, and he put all of them in the hospital. That made the front page of the New York Times. By the time of the Great Depression, however, vaudeville was pretty much dead, so Adam had to make a living selling elixirs and soaps at fairs and elsewhere. He would receive some publicity in books and in magazines, such as those published by Bernard McFadden, uh, Bob Hoffman, Perry Rader, and others. Greenstein lived, as I told you before, to the age of 84, performing just months prior to his death for his first great-grandchild at Madison Square Garden. Greenstein was, according to everybody who knew him, very content, spiritually, up to an old age. He was always happy, no matter what his circumstance. For more information on the Mighty Adam, take a look at a website, oldtimestrongman.com. Uh, read Ed Spielman's book, The Spiritual Journey of Joseph L. Greenstein, and watch the documentary. It's called The Mighty Adam, and you can get it for, I don't know, three bucks on Amazon or YouTube or Google Play. This is E.T. Comment below. Uh, hit the like or dislike button, preferably the like. Subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. And hit that bell logo up at the top right to be notified of future videos. Thank you.